Today I'm down over $50,000 and in today's video I want to talk about how I managed to feel okay and still positive on massive red days. You probably know how it feels to lose a significant portion of your wealth in a span of a day or a few days as you see stocks go down. It can be absolutely nerve wracking where you feel like your life is about to end. I want to let you know that I have definitely felt these intense feelings, like my world is about to end when I've seen my portfolio drop $100,000 in a day or $200,000 in a week. This has happened to me in the past, so I can relate. Don't forget to take two seconds, press the thumbs up button, and subscribe for more videos just like this one, more portfolio updates, and stock picks. My plan is to share everything I do on this channel in terms of my trading and my investing so we can see all the mistakes or the good things I do throughout the course of the channel. Without further ado, let's dive right into my portfolio. The first thing we see is my portfolio is down $50,000 from yesterday when I just posted that video of my portfolio. And the reason why I'm sharing this video today is because I have experienced this so many times in the past where I've seen massive drops in my portfolio in the span of one day, and I felt those feelings of panic. I've felt those concerns that maybe this is the stock market crash and we're gonna see lots of continued sell-offs and I've learned to remain patient and focus on the long term and not get so panicked over short-term sell-offs. Before I give you my tips on how to remain sane and positive throughout sell-offs and massive dips in your portfolio, I wanna show you why my portfolio actually dipped, what caused this. First thing that caused this was CRISPR. Big sell-off today, down 10% today, just from yesterday. I'm now down 11,900 in just the span of about a day. Next is Palantir, it's down 1.7%. It was down more earlier. So here in total, I'm down $10,000 on this position when just a few days ago, I was up substantially. Square, now down to $212. I'm only up 6,900. Oh, a little bit of recovery, it's actually at 214. But uh, just about a week ago, I was up over 20,000 in this position because Square was sitting at about 238 about a week ago. Another one is Tattooed Chef, down 4% on the day. That brings my position down to negative 1,700 when I was up substantially a week ago. Tesla is down just a percent, but what we need to understand is I have about 1.1 million in Tesla. So when Tesla's down 1%, I'm down 11,000. So that's a big contributor towards that total. Now, when we go over to my other margin account, this whole account is for my puts that I'm selling. And here's an update on how I'm doing with the puts that I've sold. So when you sell puts, you initially get the money. However, what happens is, since I'm selling the put, if the stock starts to drop towards that put, we're gonna start to see those negative balances come. So what it's showing is, I if I closed out all these positions, I would lose $8,398 from all of these positions that I set up. So what happens is this negative 8,000 gets put onto my total portfolio, which then drags everything down. However, if I hold these positions to expiration and all the expirations here are for Thursday the 31st, then I will keep all this $15,697 with no actual loss. However, if, we see the stock fall below strike price by expiration, I'm forced to buy the shares at that price. So right now, as of today, if, if NEO stays the same, I will have to buy 4,000 shares at $46. Blink, I will be okay. Palantir is flirting with the edge there. I may have to, may not have to buy it. Square, that's for later on. This square one is 220, so I will likely have to buy more shares of Square. And Tesla ones, I'm not concerned. Those ones I won't have to buy. So there's an update on what will possibly get exercised and what won't get exercised. I just spoke for about two minutes and I refreshed and my portfolio was up another 15,000 from the lows of today. So see how quickly it can change. And that's gonna go right into tip number one. The first tip is to not worry because things can change quickly, all right? That was a span of a few minutes and what I learned is if I don't plan on selling, it doesn't matter. That's the tip. If you don't plan on selling today, the fluctuations should not bother you. The reason why they do bother you is because psychologically, we are wired from human nature. When we see something go down, we think it will continue to go down. And this is how we can benefit in the stock market. 
we have to literally fight our human instincts and do the absolute opposite because everyone else is experiencing the same thing. I can tell you, I woke up and I was looking at these stocks, watching everything fall, and I got that initial urge like, oh my God, maybe it's a crash, maybe everything's done off. You do more research and just from experience, you fight the urge, you're like, no, no, settle down, it's okay, everything's all right. Take a step back, quit the panicking, be more rational, and do the opposite of what everyone else does. Red days are buying opportunities, but by human nature, we think the world is ending when we see a massive sell-off or we see our portfolio take a huge hit. But if we don't plan on selling today, it does not matter. So remind yourself that. I would literally even use that as an affirmation. If I don't plan on selling today, this dip does not matter. The second tip is to have cash available. If you always have 10 to 20% of your entire portfolio in cash, you can always buy. And that gives you so much peace of mind, I can't even explain it. If you always had 10 to 20% in cash, and there was a massive sell-off, you would be able to buy and feel better about yourself. If you have all of your money in the market, and you just put it all in, and then you see a 5% sell-off the next day, you will feel awful. And I've experienced it plenty of times. I am comfortable with having no cash because I am able to fight the instincts and overcome that. Now, I know from personal experience talking to a lot of people, many people cannot sit there with no cash and be fully invested in the market and feel okay. There's a lot of people that can't do that. And if you're one of those people, that is totally okay. Do what feels best for you. Different people have different risk levels. And if you're able to handle a lot of volatility and you're okay with it and you don't need to sell or you're okay with losing the money and you think you're gonna be okay without the money, then go ahead, by all means, you can stay invested in the market because over the long run, the trend of the market is up. There's no denying that. So we don't wanna stay short the market for a long period of time. And in my opinion, we will miss out on a lot of gains if we keep a large portion of our portfolio in cash for all, the majority of the time. So tip number two is to keep some cash on hand for these days when things really hit the fan and you lose 5% in a day. You can treat that as a buying opportunity and you immediately feel better about yourself because you took advantage of a sell-off. The third tip is to avoid using margin, or if you are using margin, use a very small amount so that way it's near impossible to ever get a margin call. An example of this would be about having five to one or three to one at the maximum of portfolio value to margin borrowed. As an example, if you have a $100,000 portfolio, you're going to borrow a maximum of 20,000 for your margin to invest with. However, like I said, don't use margin and you won't have to worry about any of this. If you have a lot of margin and you see a massive red day, the first thing that comes to mind is, oh shit, my stocks could get sold at a, a loss to clear this balance because you don't have control over these things. The brokerage has control when you have margin. So that's one thing that always keeps you up at night, especially if you have a lot of margin. I have taken far too much margin in the past Basically, I've taken 60% of my portfolio as margin, and then there was a massive sell-off, and I then had one-to-one -one in margin. My portfolio value was equal to the amount owing. If you know how dangerous that is, you will be cringing right now, because I was cringing in those moments, and I woke up and saw a negative multiple hundred thousand dollar balance. Very hard to do mentally, but I fought through it, I stayed positive, I kept researching the markets, I had faith in the recovery, things recovered, and I ended up selling for over a $20,000 profit, holding for a total period of one to two months. Now, that was a crazy roller coaster, and I learned my lesson in that experience not to take out that much margin ever again. So, that's the third tip. Now, it's been another four minutes, and our portfolio is now at 1,312,000. So, this started with a gloomy phase where I was really like, wow, I'm down significantly. At the lows, I saw my portfolio today at 1,280,000. Yesterday, it hit a peak of 1.4 million, and then it sold off at the end of the day, and then my portfolio was now sitting at 1,346,000, like I showed you in the video yesterday. This morning, lows of 1.28 million, 
Few minutes go by and we're creeping back up. Now, we could sell off more, who knows where we're gonna end up. But all I'm trying to say is this just further proves why we don't need to panic and why we shouldn't panic, but human nature causes us to panic. Those are my three biggest tips to remain sane and positive as things sell off, not panic and think we're going into a recession. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Do you have any tips that help you stay sane? What do you do to stay sane? Bonus thing that I do is to get into my body and out of my mind. So I'll go for a workout and get a good sweat in to distract myself from all this negative thinking because what tends to happen is when you see your portfolio fall and you see a lot of red, a lot of things going down, you start to talk to yourself very negatively and convince yourself that the world is ending. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, like this really does happen. So you wanna get out of your head. How do you do that? I personally will either go for a walk or I'll go for a workout, have a nice shower, and then put myself into taking action on my business so that way I'm not thinking about the markets 24 seven because if you do think about the markets 24 seven, I promise you, you will go insane. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this, more portfolio updates, and I will see you in the next one.